Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Jack Zora, who's been commentating uh, very adeptly, I must say, on the championship this season. He's covered Saracens and Ealing, who have made it through to the championship playoff final for the right to play in the Premiership next season. Uh, the championship playoff final back after a uh, four-year absence. It gives a real sort of uh, good end to the season, a real focal point for the English uh, rugby second tier, which sometimes gets overlooked, sadly. Um, but uh, Jack, you've really enjoyed it, haven't you, so far? And I'm sure you're uh, looking forward to this uh, big end to the season. I am, John, very much so. Uh, firstly, thanks for having me on to, to talk about it. Uh, it's uh, not being involved this weekend. It's uh, it's a shame, but I'm, uh, I'm going to enjoy it like every other fan. It is very exciting, isn't it? And to have it with the two teams that you thought would be there right at the start of the season, it's probably the right way round because no other team could really compete with Saracens this season. And Ealing, even though they've beaten them twice this season, in pre-season, uh, they did lose by 28 points mid-season. So it's going to be tough to get close to Saracens, but if anyone can, it, it is Ealing. So, uh, yes, yeah, looking forward to it. I, I'm just hoping it's it's still in the balance at 60 minutes from a from a fan perspective, but maybe not from a from a betting perspective. Uh, some people might be feeling quite nervy if that's the case. Yeah, I don't think many people would have bet on Pirates beating Saracens in round one, but obviously... As the big guns have returned, Saracens have grown and grown into the season and, and all the momentum really is with them, despite the fact that Ealing have, uh, other than that Saracens defeat, an unblemished record themselves. Yeah, they've been very good. What I've seen of them right from the start of the season, they were far, far better than Saracens uh, as a team, as a club, individually, because Saracens in the first matches in pre-season when they lost to Ealing, they weren't able to pick uh, the six Lions that they have available in the numerous other internationals that have come back. So personnel-wise and club-wise, Ealing were the better team of the two in both the pre-season matches. Uh, it, was, it was amazing to see. And I think that's what made Mark McCall say that Ealing were a mid-level premiership club, which I think a lot of mid-level premiership clubs would, would say, hang on a minute, um, we're, uh, are you serious? But that's how good Ealing were. And they were a better club than Saracens at the time they were a better team than them uh, but that's changed I think that's very much changed with the return of uh, the internationals and not just the Lions like Marrow, Jamie George um, and Elliot Daly but Nick Tompkins's return has been a massive difference to, to the centre uh, partnership that Saracens have got uh, as well as Sean Maitland has, has been pretty good and some of the some of the Returning players from afar, Alex Good is now back and, and starting at 15, which which just makes them the most fearsome prospect yet. So Saracens are at their best that they've been all season, I'm sure. Uh, Ealing will need to not just go up another level, but a triple four times as good as they were in the last match. From what you've seen of both teams, how can Ealing possibly hurt Saracens and maybe make it close going into the second leg at, uh, at Saracens in a week's time? They've got to be the physical monsters that they were when they bullied Saracens in their first games in pre-season. They were able to do that because Saracens were a bit unfit. Um, and that was when Billy Vunipola came back and, and everyone, he was then selected for England the next week and it didn't look like he put in a performance where he should have been selected for England, but um, that's in the past. They were very good at bullying Saracens, uh, actually. They've got an attitude. They've got some grizzled, gnarly performers in there. Uh, Kieran Murphy in the back row, Rain Smid, uh, Simon Azukwe. They've, they've got a lot of ability to, to smash you if you're moving slowly. And, and Saracens were like a tank at that point in the season, that they were moving very slowly. Now they are at full speed. And I don't think it's... If Saracens don't start quickly, and I mean that from a tactical part, part point of view, and their game doesn't immediately click into what we're used to seeing, that's full-bodied team moving all together around the pitch well. They don't have that. And if Ealing can slow the game down, they can knock chunks out of Saracens. They really can. Everyone's predicting. How long will that last? I don't know. That might last the first half. 
Everyone is predicting, obviously, a Saracens win and probably by some margin, two to three scores. But anyone who's watched the championship when the playoff finals uh, did exist will tell you that strange things can happen in, in this two-legged affair. It really is quite unique. I mean, just look at some of the previous finals. London Welsh knocking off Bristol when they were really fancy. Donkster uh, gave Bristol problems. Um, Worcester, Bristol, probably the best game of rugby ever outside of the top flight. Um, you could go on and on. Um, they've all been high scoring matches as well. Even London Irish versus Yorkshire Carnegie, the last playoff final, that that was upwards of something like 90 points over the two legs. Well, 90 points, I think, each of the legs. Uh, so, yeah, strange things can happen, can't they, in these games? They can, they can. And there is a, enough uh, professional uh, anger, I think. With within the two teams, and they've played each other three times this season. So there's a, there's a lot of scores to to pick up on again. And and when you get teams that play each other a lot, they can wind each other up, can't they? And that can that can lead to to some rash decisions. Um, so yeah, I think that's what Ealing have got to do: full frontal, um, deliver as much angst and annoyance to to Saracens as they can. And they are probably looking at if they get a bit lucky that way, penalties, of course, but maybe one of the Saracens players is 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 going to rise to it. And, and it's a different game, isn't it? So I, I think they do need that, that side. They need something to level up the match and, and maybe it is um, winding up the opponents a little bit, but you wouldn't expect Saracens to rise to that. So I think it'll be, I think it'll be difficult for Ealing, but I think luckily for them, they made all that. They made so many mistakes in that last game in the championship uh, that they will have learned a lot from them, and that if they don't make any of those, it'll be it'll be a lot closer than I think it feels like it might be. So prediction time: one for the final score, and two if you could pick out an Ealing player who might represent good value to be a try scorer on the day, because. Bookmakers, you may or may not know, uh, lay odds on any time try scorers and the Saracens players are by and large going to be very, very short odds. But there may be uh, a little gem that we can uh, we can provide for rugby tips to followers uh, from the Ealing mm. perspective. OK. Firstly, prediction in terms of the score. I think Saracens will, will win and I think Saracens will win by... by by 10 points. Uh, yeah, I think Saracens won by 10 points. And then in the second match, yeah, I, can't, I can't call that one. Uh, it could all change, couldn't it? But set 10 points, I think, is, is, is a fair... Probably a, that means Ealing would have played pretty well, I think, to have been within 10 points of Saracens. In terms of try scorers, well, Rain Smid is, is one of the top try scorers in the league, if not the top try scorer in the Championship this year. So he probably will have short odds anyway. But he's a he's he's a devastating runner. James Cordy Redding on the wing has a knack for scoring, um, for Ealing. Really talented player. He can he can catch you out in the air with a crossfield kick. He can he can pick and go from short range. He can finish tries off. So I'd say he's a pretty good bet. And if there's another player who who likes to pop up, I think let me just check is if Alan Walker's playing uh, for. Ealing, which I believe he is. Uh, correction, he's not. So don't pick him. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right there. He's, he's an absolute scoring. try scoring machine, isn't he? He is, but he's sadly not on the pitch for them here. So you'd be looking at Rain Smith, I think, and, and James Cordy Redding. Okay, great stuff. Well, Jack, thanks very much uh, for joining us on the Rugby Tixter Championship final preview. Uh, have a great weekend. You too, John. And uh, fingers crossed that. We still have an interesting second half of the championship to talk about next week. Cheers.